It's not about how many banks fail. There's nothing to do with it. It's about when, when does a bank fail that matters to the Fed. Fed doesn't care that SVB went under, that First Republic went under, that, you know, whoever Pac West is going to go under or whatever. When it gets to somebody the Fed actually cares about, that's when it will matter. And who's that going to be, right? And I don't think it's like a JP Morgan or a Bank of America or Wells Fargo, but is it like a lower tier down? Is it a Charles Schwab? Is it a PNC Financial? Like, who is it? Like, it's got to be somebody that's like big. And the Fed says, that's where we draw the line. And so far, it has these these other financial institutions just haven't been large enough to be, it's got to be like, it's got to be like a top 15, top 10 type financial institution for the Fed to really say, okay, we've done enough. We got to start cutting. PacWest, another big bank. It looks like another one is going under here. This stock has gone, look at this, man, in less than two months from $26 to $2. It was at $6 today. It's $2 after hours. It looks like it's likely going under. And so likely another big bank is going to have to acquire this one as well. And you know, the, obviously with the Fed raising 25 basis points today, it reminds me of a scene in a movie. You guys ever seen the original Die Hard movie with Bruce Willis, the original Die Hard I'm talking about, right? And um, uh, somebody that's at this party with him uh, be before, you know, obviously the guys take over the building and whatnot, right? Hans uh, basically, you know, shoots the guy in, in the head, right? And uh, he's on the, the whatever you call it, the walkie-talkie thing with Bruce Willis. And Bruce Willis didn't do anything to save the guy's life. And he basically, Hans wanted Bruce Willis to give himself up, right? And he says, maybe, maybe eventually I'll get to somebody you do care about. And it reminds me of the Federal Reserve right now because they're letting these banks just go under. Wall Street's sending them down one after another after another. And it seems like Wall Street's in that Hans position right now. And they're like, maybe eventually we'll get to somebody you do care about, Fed. Because clearly you didn't care about First Republic or SVB or PacWest. But eventually, eventually, we're going to get to a bank you do care about. And you will you will start lowering rates. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Eventually, they're going to get to one that the Fed does care about. And when that happens, that's when you're going to see the Fed reverse course really, really, really quickly. And it's just a question of when. First Republic, PacWest, a lot of these guys, SVB, no, no, no. But eventually, eventually, they're going to get to somebody they do care about. And that will be the moment that the Fed says, okay, okay, that's enough. That's enough. I give myself up. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go ahead and, and uh, start lowering rates. Believe me, it will happen. It's just a question of when, okay? You know, the Fed just does whatever they're doing for too long. And so, for instance, a good example was obviously the Fed kept rates uh, artificially low throughout 2021 despite us seeing like an extraordinary comeback in company earnings, in jobs, in the economy in general. It felt like, if anything, we were overheating, right? And what did the Fed do? The Fed just, man, my hair is crazy in this wind, right? The Fed just, the Fed just, stayed there and, and kept rates at zero, kept pumping money, right? Kept quantitative easing even on when they should have probably been tightening and doing QT at that point in time, right? And it wasn't until 2022 that they finally started taking this stuff serious and then started raising rates. And so, you know, if they get it wrong on that side, they can easily get it wrong on the other side as well, right? Where they, you know, keep rates too high for too long, cause a bunch of damage. And you got to understand, like, you know, this stuff takes a while to play out. And so if you keep rates too high for too long and it causes a lot of damage to the economy, it, you don't just fix that overnight. The damage could last many quarters and potentially many years. That's the worry of going too far, right? And look at, they went too far on the other side. And look at, we've been dealing with high, inf, too high of inflation for two, two, two and a half years now, folks. Think about that, right? Obviously, no one paid attention to it until about 18 months ago, but really, it had been going on way before people really caught on to that. I was talking about this. I was talking about inflation was out of control high back in, shoot, 2021, like early 2021. Because you, if you know my conspiracy theory, you know it is that the, the, that the market's actually going to force Jerome Powell to cut rates at some point this summer. That's my opinion on that. Um, and, and they could do that a couple ways. Really tank the market hard. Or finally get to a financial institution that makes the Fed say, we got to stop. If all of a sudden, I, I'm telling you, CPI does not have to be in the twos for the Fed to cut. CPI could be in the threes, let's say, this summer, which I think is very realistic. And you could have a situation where they take down a financial institution that the Fed cares about, they cut. Guarantee you they cut. It just has to be somebody that's big enough to they say, oh, crap, man, not, not this one. 
that would be the moment that they could go ahead and make a move there. Or if you saw a major weakness in the labor market, something like that, unemployment shot up in a major way, something, um, I, they don't have to get to the twos. That's my opinion. They could actually be in the threes and cut. They, they're going to have a lot of reasons to do so. So this gentleman's prediction there is kind of similar to mine. I think he's just thinking a little bit more around fall time, uh, Fed potentially cutting rates, where I feel like it's going to be at some point this summer. I think that's where we differ here. You don't always have to be in the most talked about, most hyped out, most crazy business models to make the most game-changing gains. I just showed you two such simple business models, a cosmetics company, a flip and flapjack in place that sells chicken wings, okay, up 144% and up 285% in the past year. When countless other companies are having so much, you don't always have to be in the, the craziest, most exciting stock. That's the thing you guys got to understand about this game, okay? You know, I think there's a lot of stocks I, I own that are talked about a lot that are going to be some good returners. I don't think they're going to be the best returners. I think there's stocks that I'm, I own that aren't talked about very much that will be the best returners. Of the stocks I've owned over my time, let's just look at me in the past four or five years. What's the best return stock I've had? Elf Cosmetics. Uh, that return over the past, I don't know, five years or so is astronomically high, right? My gains on Elf has been, I don't know, 1,100, 1,200% or some insane about, right? And so this stock's done me tre tremendous. Is that even a talked about stock? No. And you look at other stocks I own, obviously Tesla's been a great returner, but it hasn't beaten Elf, right? A uh, stock like I own Palantir, and obviously that's still a relatively newer position for me, but it hasn't done as well so far, right? And maybe it will in the future, but that's obviously a very talked about stock. You don't always have to have your money in the most talked about stocks to get tr tremendous gains, man. They, they can come out of nowhere and they can be very simple business models. And you'd be shocked at some of the gains you can get in some of those stocks that it's like, wow, that business model, like... But how did that return 100%, 200%, 500%, whatever? So just always remember that, guys. You've got to look for opportunities in the market. There's always opportunities in front of you. you don't, don't buy into all the negative this and that. You could have got tied up in all that over the past year. When For what? You could have been in Wingstop making 144% gains. You could have been in Elf making 285% gains. And meanwhile, people are so caught up in all the negativity all the time, missing all these opportunities. You know, they missed NVIDIA at 110 bucks last year. They missed AMD at, at 55. They missed Meta at 88 bucks. Missed Tesla at 100. And it's just like, you know, you can get so caught up in all this crap all the time. And meanwhile, you're missing tremendous opportunities. And it's up for us as investors to find those opportunities out there in the market, folks, because they're always out there. And, um, you know, those games are, are life changing. And then you, you know, take it and move it into the next stock and just continue to build out your portfolio bigger and bigger over time, right? Build a great diversified portfolio, growth, value, dividends, growth, value, dividends, GVD, one, two, three, baby. Okay.